on your wrist a plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. Okay, Echo, what's going on? Shout out to everybody. Thank you all for being here this evening. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate you coming through. I know it might be late for the East Coast, but I know for the West Coast, it's just, um, what is it? It's just 10 o'clock over there. It's about, it's 10, 12 over there. It's 1, 12 in the morning over here on the West Coast. And then you got the stuff in the middle and in between, but Shout out to everybody. I had to come out. Listen, last day of January, I'm like, let me push out a video. I've been watching all this stuff go down. I have lots of thoughts on it. And really, I really didn't want to hit the hive's nest that is um, the barbs, but fuck it. Fuck it. Y'all have already let me know how you all feel. Come on in, hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Y'all have already let me know how you feel. I really haven't really said much of anything, to be quite frank. If you saw my community post, you already know what it is. Um, I really haven't said much of anything outside of uploading the, the little white boys video when he called Nicki Minaj the queen of rap, but he added an E to the end of it. And um, a lot of People wanted to pretend as if my channel was some sort of uh, an airport. Um, there's no need for you to announce your departure. If you're unsubscribing, you can just go. And if you're unsubscribing because we have a, 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 I have an opinion that you don't agree with, then it's probably best that you do go. I don't want people on my channel who agree with everything that I say. I want people who are subscribers, viewers, and supporters of my channel and understand that dialogue is always going to be just that. There is no way that you would be able to sit and watch my channel. There should be no way that you sit and watch my channel or anybody else's and agree with everything that I say or someone else's. If you can't be mature enough to respect the difference of opinion, then it is probably best that you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's best that you go. It's best that you go. Can y'all hear and see me okay? Let me check my settings and make sure I'm hooked up to the right microphone and everything's great. Audio, okay. I think everything's good. Everything's good. Okay. So um, I understand a lot of the barbs are childish. I really never wanted to come out and say whether um, I'm team Meg or or Nikki, or my team Cardi, or Nikki, because really, I think it's childish. I feel like I shouldn't have to pick a team. I feel like I should be able to objectively listen to all parties and just, um, you know, be critical of their behavior and their actions and their music without having to pick a side. I shouldn't have to pick a side in order to listen to music or in order to give commentary, right? But for some reason, it seems as though the barbs in large feel as though it is against the law. It is illegal to have any sort of criticism towards their, their queen, all hell, Nicki Minaj, okay? I find that to be pathetic. There are a few barbs that are logical, um, that do have critical thinking skills, but by and large, a lot of them don't. I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And it's no point in me pussyfooting around it anymore. I'm a grown ass woman. And a lot of the shit that Nikki has going on is quite goddamn despicable. And it's pathetic. It's pathetic. I might as well go hard in the paint at this point. You know, a lot of y'all let me know y'all were unsubscribed. And I've seen how many of y'all unsubscribed. It was 41 of y'all. Good riddance. Y'all like the docs. Y'all like to release people's addresses, their phone numbers, their parents' numbers, and everything else. And that is quite pathetic that y'all are going this hard for a woman that wouldn't bail you out should you be arrested for anything that you do in her name or not. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. Okay. Okay. Y'all can hear me. Okay. Great, 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 great. Because one thing about people who give commentary, you shouldn't be spooked 
and nervous out of giving your commentary because there is a, 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 a force or somebody with a, a, a fan base that has a lot of time to waste making people miserable who are critical. There are even some barbs who know that not only her moves, but her most recent track is hot ass. It's not even the shit. It's not even the fart. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I have way too much to say about this. And there are a couple of other things I wanted to get into as well. And I figured, you know what? It's no point in me even trying to prance around this. I wanted to go live all day today. And I'm like, oh, what can I talk about this? Not, you know, Meg and Nikki. It's no point in me pretending like this isn't a trending topic and give it. This is a trending topic. And I'm watching it go down. And I have thoughts, goddammit. And I'm going to give my thoughts. Then nobody's going to scare me out of my thoughts. So here we are. All right. What up and welcome back. I'm Jane, the plainish Jane. And here on this channel, I provide syrup in the form of black news and celebrity updates. I am so grateful to have you all here with me today. Okay, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button the same way you clicked on this, this video to watch it. Please be sure you click on that thumbs up button. You know what? But also if you don't like the video because you're one of those barbs or you don't like my delivery, please feel free to hit the thumbs down button. Whichever button you want to hit, just hit one. Just hit one, babes. Either way, I do appreciate it. All right. So we're going to get right into this because there is a lot going on. There is a lot happening here. I just so happened to have uh, caught Nikki on Twitter spaces earlier today with Joe Button and some of her other um, followers. I'm sorry, fans. Um, earlier today, and I found it to be quite interesting. So let's go ahead and 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 cozy in. Um, and I'm gonna tell y'all how I feel about it. I may or may not open the phone lines. Who knows, right? Um, but we're definitely gonna get into discussing this entire Meg and Nikki debacle. It's quite crazy. It's quite crazy. All right. But we're going to get into it. It's a new year. We're going into February. My birthday is the 6th. My birthday is literally like five days away. I'm excited about that. Drop some pancakes in the chat for your girl's birthday. All right. And let's go ahead and let's just get into this video, shall we? Roll us on your wrist plain Jane. Get tuned in to Jane, the plainish Jane. Be sure to thumbs up the video and subscribe and let's get into it. All right, so moderators, please don't hesitate to use your wrench however you need to. We already know the mentality of uh, a great amount of the barbs. I'm not tolerating disrespect or giving people second chances. If you need to block, time out, do whatever you need to do, please feel free to do that because I don't mind a difference of opinion, but one thing I won't tolerate is disrespect. So do what you need to do to all of my moderators. And also a shout out to... Um, uh, Dreaming Edmund, okay? Shout out to you for being a channel member for 13 months. Yeah, it's been that long. Oh my gosh. And shout out to T. Lamont for joining the membership. I do appreciate both of you all, all right? I want to get started with this. I do find it to be quite pathetic um, because Nicki Minaj, if it's one thing that we know about Nicki, especially because she was in spaces today, we're going to get into some snippets in a second. Nicki Minaj is addicted to Twitter in particular, but she's addicted to social media. Her, her, her eyes and her boots are on the ground all the time when it comes to discussions being had about her, whether it be from her barbs or whether it be from people who don't like her, who are opposed to her behavior, her music, her or who, people who are critical of her, just in general. Her eyes are always on the ground, right? So it's not like Nicki Minaj doesn't see how dangerous, how dangerous the information, the sensitive and private information that is released when it comes to people who are simply just critical of her actions or her music her behavior, her morale, or lack thereof. There's no way that she doesn't see that. 
and she refuses to speak about speak about it or reel her people back in. One thing about Beyonce, when her fans do too much, Beyonce says, listen, y'all, calm down. Don't, don't do all that. Beyonce doesn't like all that. Nicki Minaj likes all of that. Let the record show that Nicki Minaj is 41 years old and Meg Thee Stallion is 28. Nicki Minaj and Meg Thee Stallion are nowhere near on the same level. And I really don't like Nicki's behavior. She's accomplished a lot. She has several songs that I do really enjoy, to be quite honest. But her behavior is the Lulu. Nikki and Meg are not on the same level. Nikki has been in the game for well over a decade. Do you hear me? Well over a decade. Meg is new to this. Nikki is true to this. There's no need for her to be crashing out in this way. However, this is what she does because she feels threatened. You're 41. You've been doing this for over 10 years. Meg is 28. She's been doing this for what? Five or something? Main, on a mainstream level, how long has she been doing this compared to you, Nikki? Y'all aren't even on the same level for you to be crashing out in this way. Where was all this energy when you were beefing with Cardi? When you were beefing with Kim? When you were beefing with Lotto? When you were beefing with Iggy? When you were beefing with anyone else? That, 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 there's the list of people that you don't get along with is very long. And that's very telling with in and of itself. So for you to be well over 10 years older than this young lady and for her to be acting more mature than you, that speaks volumes in and of itself. Remy, you didn't have all this energy for them. You have all this energy for Meg because you know she's in this mode where she's laser focused. She's got her blinders on and there's a goal for her. She's getting, she's taking her power back. She's taking her career back. And you're trying to derail that with all of this nonsense and by crashing out. Hmm. The doxing is pathetic. The gravesite mess is pathetic. The address of Megan's Mother's gravesite being doxxed is pathetic. It's pathetic. How dare you act like people don't have the right to be critical of you? Because you're a queen. You're an icon. You're a legend. I, I, I don't think so. Nobody's above reproach. Nobody. It's given very much cult, okay? You refuse to tell your fans to stand down when you see all this doxing going on. There have been numerous, there have been dozens of TikTokers who have been doxxed. Their families have been bothered. Their family members, their friends, their places of employment, their addresses, a lot of sensitive information. And you refuse to tell these people to stand down. However, I heard you on the spaces earlier today saying that you were going to sue Kyle of the Neighborhood Talk because he put up a post about how your fans were openly conspiring to go up and ruin the gravesite where Megan's mother is buried. You're fin so you can address Kyle posting about your fans openly conspiring against this and saying you're going to sue Kyle. So I know you've got your eyes and your ears to the streets, but you refuse to put your fans in a place and say, fans, calm down. Don't do that. Come on. Stop doxing people. This and this isn't the first time that Nikki's fans have doxed people who have been critical of Nikki. 
Kimberly Foster is one. Justin King of Reeds is another. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. Am I taking a risk by talking about Nikki right now? Hmm? Yeah. But y'all are unhinged. That's the bottom line. And she refuses to reel it in because she likes it. She likes to fear a monger. And it's quite pathetic for a 41-year-old mother. So it's, it's interesting how you want to sue somebody for the reporting of what your fans are openly planning, but you refuse to tell your fans to pipe down. That's quite crazy to me, okay? Um, let's talk about the Megan's Law thing, right? So apparently the family, right? This crime happened in 1996, very unfortunate situation. And Monique Slaughter kind of planted this seed in, that, that started this. If I was Megan's family, I would sue Meg the Stallion for every red cent because how dare you profit off of my pain with this diss track? A lot of people didn't even know what Megan's Law was until this song came out. And it's not like she said a whole bunch, y'all ain't mad at me, y'all mad at Megan's Law. You cannot sue somebody for a reference in a song about a law. If that's the case, nobody should rap about any law. And it really, was it, what, was it a jab at Nikki? Because there are a lot of people that that could apply to. There were a lot of people that that could have applied to. Nikki felt personally attacked because she's Cinderella and the shoe fits. And she's a hit dog hollering. That's the bottom line. Not only does that shoe fit her and her husband, it also fits her brother. Plural. Let's not forget that Nicki Minaj's brother got with the woman, was the stepdad of said woman's child, and his semen was found in the 11-year-old girl's panties, and therefore he's in prison. And Nicki Minaj decided to write a letter asking for leniency is saying he's the most loving, caring, nicest person you could have ever met. So please just take this into consideration. That's her brother. She's a rape apologist. That is why they're calling her the queen of rape. So you feel hit. Your, you, your career is tanking because you're crashing out over not only marrying somebody with an ankle monitor and who's on the registry, but also your brother is the same type of person. And you twerked on a 13 year old on stage and the list goes on and on when it comes to you, my love. So, damn. That shoe fit like that. All she said was Megan's Law. It fits a lot of other people in the industry too. That shoe. Might be a size seven, might be a size eight, but it fits a lot of other people in the industry and in the world. You're not mad at me. You're mad because sex offenders. So as far as the family being upset and the family ain't even listened to the song, Please miss me with that. Most people didn't even know. They had no clue what that law was. If anything, this spread awareness. Imagine if somebody did a song and put Amber Alert in it. Is Mark Class then going to come out? Look it up. Is Mark Class then going to come out and say, oh, I, don't, I don't want you talking about this law in my song. People can talk about whatever law they want to talk about. In Referencing a law is not illegal. Please stop. And you got the barbs. Oh, yeah. She's using. I'm sorry. Where was this outrage when Nikki did these bars on Christopher Reeves? 
on Rosa Parks, on Malcolm X's daughter. What? Where was the outrage, babes? Where was the outrage? It's very selective. It's giving very much selective. It's also giving very much the Lulu. Please stop. Y'all not mad at me. Y'all are mad because y'all associate with sex offenders and people who are on the registry. What is disrespectful about a statement like that? Because when you break down that bar, that's essentially what they're saying. Y'all ain't mad at me. Y'all mad because y'all associate with sex offenders. What, what, where, where's the disrespect? I'm trying to find it. Is, is the disrespect in the room with us? Am I tripping? Huh? Hmm. Okay. Ugh. So we're concerned about Megan's Law, but we're not concerned about the doxing of people who give commentary on Nikki and how she's crashing out. And it's quite sad to see that her fan base in large are enabling her and cheering her off a cliff. Mm. Interesting. And again, she didn't say any names. It's just that the, the main hit dog is hollering. There are other people that that shit applies to. There were jabs towards Drake and a, a lot of other people actually in Meg's song, but she didn't say any names. The hit dog is hollering and she, it's been, Meg released this song Midnight Thursday here in Baltimore. It's 1.33 in the morning right now. It's Thursday. It's been, it's going on seven days now and Nikki is still fucking talking, still trying to excuse why she has the right to be this nasty, this dirty, and this grimy. I know your dad, mama. I know your dad. And so if you really felt like you had an excuse to do all of this, you wouldn't have to be explaining for seven days why you had the right to give such a nasty hit below the belt ass type of bar. You're trying to convince yourself. You're not trying to convince nobody else. Babes. But, you know. There we are. Okay. So, you know, Nikki saying you want to talk about my family. Nobody named you, but you jumped up and you took that bullet. The shots were fired towards anybody who was associated with sex offenders. And you jumped up and you took that bullet and said, you talking about my family. So now I'm going to talk about your dad, mama, as if your dad ain't dead. And as if, Listen, I was on the neighborhood talk and I saw somebody leave a comment like now, if Meg come back and say they had to pull your dad off of the ground like a sticker, you'd be mad, right? Because he was killed in a hit, you know, in a car accident. He was hit. Then what? I do think that Meg has too much class to respond in that way. But if she did, it's like, you can't hit me in the balls and tell me I can't hit you in the balls. You can't hit me in the, you know what I'm saying? Like, you talking about a dead parent as if you don't have one, as if you didn't lose a parent within the last couple of years. This is not making any sense. And then I heard the bar in the Nicki Minaj song of her talking about some, with a minor, like you were the wrong person. What in the self-drag is going on? The call is coming from inside the house. You have no room to give a bar about anybody being inappropriate with minors. At the end of the day, make it go up to the school and help the children, the kindergartners, finger paint. Can, can Kenneth? Can Kenneth even go pick your baby up from the school? Ah. <sighs> I mean, I'm just saying like, you know, the 72 hours, you know, we, we went from three to four to five. We're going on seven days. You know, I'm tired. 
I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I didn't have it up to here. I had it up to here. I've had it up to here. Nikki, log the fuck off. Like, do you even have a team? Do they care about you? Why won't they take your phone from you? Why not? Because you're you're looking extremely pressed. And it's pathetic. If this lady is not a threat to you, if she's so untalented, why the fuck are you talking about her sun up the sundown for seven days straight? You're pressed. You're threatened. Megan is clearly up next. And if there was nothing that could solidify or could confirm that before now, it is your behavior. It's giving very much insecure. You can't reign forever. You can't. I, and I mean, her talk about lion lipo, Nikki, we see your body. First of all, we see those oversized veneers. Let's just start there, right? Then we see that it's very obvious you've had a lot of work done on that body and it doesn't look good. The same way Cardi's body kind of looks like this ain't even proportionate. So the nerve of you, even if Meg did get a little light bulb done and Meg be in the gym, where have we never seen Nikki? Someone tell me. Someone tell me where we've never seen Nikki, the gym. She doesn't work out. She relies on the knife to keep her looking the way that she feels like is appropriate to keep her at a, in, at a certain place. Nikki has had countless surgeries. Countless. We done ran out of fingers and toes when it comes to how many surgeries Nikki done had. And she talked about Meg's lipo and when your nose heals. First of all, it's very normal for a lot of you women in the industry and in these positions to get surgery. And so what if, let's just say Meg did get a little bit of lipo. Let's say she did a little chiseling to her nose. That's just two things. But she don't look botched. But you, you, I think you're the wrong one to be talking about surgeries. I think you're the wrong one. Have y'all hit thumbs up on the video yet? Mm. We can't mention laws and music now. God forbid I want to mention the Karen Act. Y'all know what the Karen Act is? Now, it's not really enforced a lot. God forbid somebody put the Karen Act in their music. The Karen Act is based on Karen's who racially profile black people and do the most. God forbid somebody put the Karen Act in a song. Would there be people coming out saying, oh, well, one of my family members died based on a Karen and the Karen Act is here because a Karen did X, Y, Z. This is disrespect. It is not illegal to talk about a law and to create awareness based on a law in music. Can we stop with this shit? Are we being serious right now? The, the, the general consensus, the reaction from a lot of people when Megan's song came out is a lot of people had to look it up to even figure out what the hell Megan's law was. It is a good thing because it protects people. It helps people understand where predators are located so that they can better protect themselves if a predator, if they just so happen to find out that a predator is in their vicinity, for themselves and their kids. Let's stop. Let's stop with the madness. Nikki bought ass that she can't even shake. It's a mess. Ooh, yeah, see Meg's butt be moving. Nikki's don't. Anyway. Oh, 
Goodness gracious. Moving on, moving on. Thank y'all all all so much for being. How many likes do we have, moderators? Can you tell me how many likes do we have? Because my stuff used to tell me how many um, likes I had in real time, but it doesn't tell me that anymore. Um, Let's move on to the next thing. There are a lot of things. Oh, we got to get into the Gail King. Um, Nicki Minaj brought Gail King into the conversation earlier today in spaces. She brought Rihanna into Rihanna's assault and the, the how she was battered by Chris Brown back in 2009 into the conversation. And then you had a grown man telling Joe Budden that there is no such thing as being objective when it comes to the queen. We're going to stick with everything that she says. There were so many shocking aspects of that conversation today that 122 likes. Okay, cool. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. There were so many shocking aspects to the conversation earlier today. I was shook. I was eating my lunch. I'm busy calling around trying to find a new therapist because I got a different insurance. Shout out to me. Okay. Shout out to therapy. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Right. And I'm listening to this foolishness and I'm like, what is wrong with her? Why does she sound 19 years old and she's 41? It's just she was cussing out the wrong people. She was cussing out her fans. Oh, 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 my bad. I'm sorry. Because she just the fans were asking questions. A a couple of fans, a handful of fans, they were critical of her behavior and asking her questions and she she doesn't you can't ask her no questions if it's not praising her and and sucking a fart out her ass she's finna cuss you out but then she even had got it wrong and cussed out the ones who were kissing her ass so what's really happening here so let's see where are we going to start we're going to start with the earliest thing in the video which is the rihanna moment like how did rihanna get in it how did rihanna get in the middle of this beef i want to say it's a beef between nikki and meg but really it's a beef between nikki and her fucking nikki and her insecurities that's what it really is because she's not beefing with meg she's beefing with herself meg ain't 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 going back and forth with her and i'm glad where are the other tracks that she said was gonna come out she said when she released the track, now you got 24 hours to apologize to your mama. Lot on your damn mama. You got 24 hours to apologize to your mama. Or I'm going to release some more tea. If you were really as angry as what you were giving as you were spiraling out, you would have released. Really, now, I went easy on you. You wouldn't have went easy on you. You're a mean ass bitch. At the end of the day, you're a mean ass bitch. And you're insecure and you think that somebody can replace you. And truth be told, Nikki, can't nobody replace you. You are your own entity. You are your own person. Meg brings different elements. And every other rapper brings different elements. But you are so threatened by these other young up-and-coming rappers. that That's why you gravitated to Ice Spice. That's why you gravitate to some of these other younger people. God forbid Ice Spice ever want to do a collab with Cardi B or Lotto or somebody else that you don't like. She's going to be the new enemy number one. You feel like once somebody collabs with you, they're not allowed to work with other people. And that's not good business. That's not my career. I'm not boxing myself in just because I collaborate with you. And then I'm boxing myself off based on the long laundry list of 25, 30 people that you don't bang with. That's not beneficial to me. But that's what you expect out of people. So... Let's get into the Rihanna moment and Rihanna's trauma and how Rihanna's trauma was, uh, you know, brought up in this conversation um, earlier today, which I found to be beyond ridiculous. Take a listen and and 
I, I want to know how y'all feel about it. And then I'll tell y'all how I feel about it. One thing that I have done um, in the description box. So we're going to listen to bits and pieces from the spaces from earlier today. Um, I have listed the, the full linked the full video to this spaces that she was in with Joe Button earlier today on Twitter. I've linked that full conversation that they had down below in the description box. It is the very first link down below in the description box. And also one of my moderators is probably going to um, post the link again. I'll probably post it again while this thing is playing, just to let you know. But we're going to refer to this a couple of times um, within this video. I have a couple different timestamps that I want you all to listen to. Okay. So thank you all for supporting the channel and being here. Um, if you like the video, if you like my commentary, thumbs up, subscribe. And if you're a Barb and you hate me, you hate my guts and you hate what I'm saying, hit the thumbs down button. I, I, I do implore you to do so. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's get into this. She wanted, a, to be honest, this is so obvious. She wanted a Rihanna moment so bad. To do, what do you mean? Let me finish. <laughs> Wait, is this, who, what's your name, babe? Is, cause this, is this the person I like or is this the person I, I don't like? I don't know. Are you the girl that just spoke? No, I'm just the girl. I don't know. I'm not. No, the that's the girl, girl. I'm the guy, girl. Oh, which one is the one I, do, I, I don't like today right now that was got, got my nerves right before I came got it on. That's Jameson. I, I get on everybody's nerves thinking. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So I'm so just, now, okay. So, sweetheart, the person I just spoke, what's your name, mama? Because I don't want to keep calling you mama. I'm Dory. Okay, Dory. Okay. <laughs> um. So, so Dory, ask what you said again, mama, because I, I didn't. Because you said she wanted a Rihanna moment. So, I wanted to know what, like, which Rihanna moment. Well, like, you know, you, you, you know what? You go, you go and Google. You go and Google. Uh, Dory. Um, um, so, so, but here's the thing Rihanna is just known for, you know, being herself. You, it is, you know, you see, you get, you get what you see, you see what you get, you get what you see type of, you know, vibe, right? I'm not talking about anything personally, I'm not talking about anything that uh, anyone to spoke to me about. I'm saying that's what we know we as. So, Rihanna never m would milk something like that. Like, you could tell she couldn't wait to get that part of her life. Like, you could tell she couldn't wait to just try to move on with her life. You understand? And then people even bashed her for not dragging it out, not milking it. And she just, you know, she was just like, Yo, I was mad young. We were young. Like, I just, I just want to move on with my life now, yo. You know why? Because Rihanna knows that she's she was a superstar with or without controversy. She's beautiful with or without controversy. She's loved with or without controversy. I'm sorry. Sympathy. 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 But when you need constant fucking sympathy and then you get on social media and tell somebody, ain't nobody going to respond to me. Then when people respond to you, you go mute and then try to stop my song from coming out. If Nicki Minaj had done any of those things, oh, y'all would have a lot to say. But I understand heavy is the head that wears the crown. I am the queen. Okay, however, I've asked now that I'm a mom for people, I feel like I've, I deserve it for people within my own culture just to knock it off. If you have something to say, if you, if you don't like me, say it about me. That's all I've asked, right? Now, I know I don't get to tell people what to do. I, I simply asked. But I do get to determine how I react. Now, here's the thing. I also just broke a few records. Now, if you just put out 
a record-breaking album on December 8th with five Okay, let's get into this quote unquote Rihanna moment that she was talking about. And shout out to this channel, um, the AMK Famecom channel, really good Twitter account, keeps you in the know, really good YouTube channel, keeps you in the know. Like I said, if you want to listen to the full spaces, it's the first link down below in the description box. And I see one of my... Um, moderators just also um put it in the chat at me next time oh oh some of the barbs are here in the chat and they're getting blocked because they're capping for their coat queen that sucks however okay so let's talk about this rihanna moment and how fucked up it is right so I see a lot of Nikki fans. I see a lot of Barb's. Oh, that is so messed up for Megan the Stallion to talk about Megan's Law in her song. Oh, that is so messed up. Profiting off of that family's pain and what happened to that little girl in 1996 in this battle and this back and forth with Nicki Minaj. However, Rihanna and her abuse got brought up in this conversation. How and why? How and why? You use Rihanna's trauma to say, oh, Rihanna couldn't wait for this to be over with. In other words, you were expecting Meg to deal with her trauma in, the, in an identical way, in the same exact way that Rihanna dealt with her trauma with Chris Brown. No two pieces of trauma look the same. Therefore, no dealing with and healing from trauma, especially in the public eye, look the same. How dare you bring that up to say, you should have did what Rihanna did. Rihanna couldn't wait for it to be over. You're milking it. And truth be told, Meg ain't milking shit. People are milking it. So every time you get online, people are, you're lying, Bigfoot. Tori didn't do it. Maybe Kelsey did it, or maybe the security guard, you know. So either she's explaining herself based on these bullshit ass accusations, or she dealt with it in court and been quiet. When is the last time Meg has truly spoken about what the fuck happened to her foot that night when she left Kylie Jenner's party? When's the last time she spoke about that? It's not her fault that that happened in the public eye. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. So stop acting like she's trying to milk it. You're upset because, and, and truth be told, Nikki was in a relationship with somebody. Nikki was in a relationship with somebody that she said put their hands on her. And so for you to act like For you to act like you don't believe her. And, and, and here's the, the, the part that's extremely contradictory, in my opinion. She talking about how you get shot with no scar. Okay, so you saying there's no scar, but you were liking photos of her scar on Twitter, right? So you saying how you get shot with no scar, Nikki. But you also tell her to get up on your good foot. So you admit that one of her feet had been fucked up by some sort of incident. It's the contradictions for me. So you're teasing her about having an injured foot, but also saying, how you get shot with no scar? So did she get hit or she hurt or did she not get hurt? Which one is it? I'm confusion. What is it? So all these in your windows and your, your book foot, one foot, two foot, red foot, blue foot. 
I mean, when you rhyme foot with foot four times, baby, that's not impressive. We expect more from you. We expect more from you. You've given us better in the past. And I can be extremely disgusted by what you got going on right now and your behavior and the lack of morale and all that other stuff, while also giving your credit and saying you've given us so much better and great lyricism in the past. And now the bar is in hell. Is it because you're not with Safari no more? Is it because you're not with Meek no more? What's happening? Red foot, blue foot, green foot, blue foot. Get up on your good foot. Are we supposed to be impressed by that? It's given very much Dr. Seuss. It's given Dr. Seuss. Hit thumbs up if y'all haven't already. Thank you all so much. You know, it's 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 just giving bitter, and she's too old. Like, if this behavior was coming from a 19 or a 22, 23 year old, I'd be like, okay, this is coming from a woman that's 41 years old with a child. It's ridiculous. In nine years, she'll be 50. Will she still be acting this way? And will her fan base continue to enable her? in said way. <sighs> um, let's see, where's the next point that I wanna go to? I'll go to the Joe Button part and then we'll go, we'll circle back to the Gail King part. So let's get to the Joe Button timestamp that I have. Uh, let's get into this. And thank you all for dropping some pancakes in the chat and for being here. Even if you disagree, if you respectfully disagree, I definitely appreciate your presence and your contribution to the dialogue um, and subscribing to the channel. Okay, now we're going to get into... Um, listening to the mentality of her, her followers, her, her, her herd of five, even, even grown ass men, you can hear that this is a grown ass man acting like this. Cause my thing was when I heard that Nikki was in spaces with Joe Button, I said, oh shit. I know that Joe Button is extremely smitten by Nikki and her presence and, and, and the proximity. So I said, oh, okay, I'm assuming that Joe is afraid to say that the track is ass. I'm assuming that he is afraid to say that. But apparently he tried to say that in a nice way. Well, he didn't say that the track was ass, but he was trying to be objective as to why the track isn't the best thing that ever happened. Um, and he got like low key attacked, not only in this space, but in his comments. And he says something on his podcast. Take a listen to what grown men are saying and doing when it comes to another grown man who is an actual, an actual. Somebody said, oh my God, let me unsubscribe because what is this? Yeah, unsubscribe. I don't have to like your fave and you don't have to like me. And this is not an airport. So you don't have to announce your departure, babes. Bye. I want people who can critically think and who can handle a dialogue with people who don't agree or align with all of their viewpoints. There is not a single person that I am subscribed to and I'm subscribed to a lot of people and that I watch and that I enjoy I don't agree with everything that everybody says. As a matter of fact, some of the channels that I agree the most, that I enjoy the most, I disagree with them. So if you think that because I have an opinion that differs from you and you feel like, oh, I don't agree with you. I got to unsubscribe. Then unsubscribe. At the, end of the, at the end of the day, what Nikki is doing is she's pushing misogyny. And I'm going to get into that in a second. Because I'm, I, I, I'm going to get into that in a little while. However, let's get into this grown man telling Joe about how he shouldn't be objective and how he should just be accepting whatever Nicki Minaj puts out without even thinking for himself. 
So let's get into that. Okay. Drop some pancakes. Tap on that thumbs up button. The same way y'all tap to get into this video. If they got, you know, children, they got their own chip. They, they, they trying to chase their dreams. I'm never going to beat the allegations, Nikki. What? Thank you. <laughs> I'm never gonna be. You're not, you're not, you're not supposed to. Nigga. They're gonna oh, what, Joe? Me. What? No, but Joe. They're gonna tell me I'm not an objective, an objective person. What? Why? Would... Nigga, why you act, Joe? We not objective when it come to her, nigga. It's Queens, nigga, at all. Uh, yeah, but that. Yeah, but that. We not yeah, objective that's when it come too. to Nikki, nigga. I remember. Yeah. You know, just, let me just say this. I remember Nikki being in the studio stack, and I remember her passion, nigga. She come from that. And I was I fucking part... anybody? Wait, hold on. Sweetheart, was I fucking anyone? It's, no, no, you were. It's flip. Thank it's Queen's. It's Queen's thank flip, by the way, Nikki. What's up? Like, hey, Queen's flip. And but 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 this is you a, wasn't, but this no, is, you wasn't. You but this wasn't. Is, thank you, thank you. That's an important part. You see, you see, that's you why. Wasn't. Ain't no such thing as being objective. Objective. We're back. What do you mean there's no such thing as being objective? Like what type of, uh, what type of mess is that? Let's just go ahead and, um, let's just go ahead and take a look. J j just for the people that, I, I know a lot of people understand what this is. of a person or their judgment, not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. So this means not being biased and being honest, whether you like or admire or are friends with a person, it means being able to be honest about how you feel about a person's decisions, their work, et cetera, et cetera. So what do you mean ain't no such thing as being objective? It's the queen. And we just need to agree with whatever the fuck she says or does. What do you mean? The fuck do you think this is? It's given very much slavery. It's given very much cult, to be quite frank. What are we what are we what are we really talking about? Mm. However, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Um, let's get into the Gail King bit. Um, I'm gonna, because Nikki tried to pull the race card, which it, it, it was piss poor. You can even hear it. Okay, here we go. Let's get into this. And when he was, niggas could have actual beef in the street. Niggas could get killed. He was, she allowed this man to beef on social media. She lied to Gail King, which is, is, is damaging to Gail King as a black woman, as a, a black woman with a real publication. J Gail King is not fucking, you know, some person, somebody on, you know, a, a, I don't know. But She's a reputable woman with a reputable brand. You go on, on Gail King and lie to her face and said you never fucked Tory. It comes out that in fact, and you know all the black people knew about it, about it. Look on her face when she could, it was so obvious shit. Yeah. Um, but your man said he asked you to your face and you lied on your dead mama. Lied on your dead mama. Lied on your dead no, no, you're dead. No, no, you're dead. So, excuse me, are you the girl that said you had some shit on repeat? Shut your. Please. No, that's a guy. Uh, oh, oops, sorry, babe. Hi, oh, hey, no. My bad, Nikki. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Now, not only do you hear her try to play the race card in a way that truly doesn't make any sense. 
she's trying to cuss out or get smart with the wrong people, people who are really on her side. She's really crashing out. She's in high defense mode to the point where she can't even think straight and she's cussing out her own fans. And she did this several times throughout the live. I listened to the entire thing. Let's listen one more time because she didn't even know how to describe Gail. Okay. Let's take it back here. Was y'all was y'all having why why wasn't no campaigns for party? Party is the one that said you lied on your dead mama. You embarrassed this man when he was niggas could have actual beef in the street. Niggas could get killed. He was she allowed this man to beef on social media. She lied to Gail King, which is 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 damaging to Gail King as a black woman, as a a black woman with a real publication. G Gail King is not fucking you know some person somebody on, you know, a uh, uh, I don't know, but she's a reputable woman with a reputable brand. You go on on Gail King and lie to her face and said you never fucked Tory. It comes out that in fact, and you know all the black people knew about it about it. Look on her face when she could. It was so obvious, yeah. Um, but. Your man said he asked you to your face and you lied on your dead mama. Lied on your dead mama. And my whole thing is this, girl, stop it. Stop. You know, like these gimmicks and, and the weight, you can tell she sits back and does her mess and waits for her barbs to make excuses for her and then repeats them. And a lot of the stuff that she says is going on is stuff that she's actually engaging in herself. She's engaging in herself. I'm tired. I'm tired. I I'm tired. I'm tired. I didn't have it up to here. I had it up to here. Tired. She's too old. She's too old. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's, uh, nigga, you gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. All that you is. It's, uh, uh, to the point where now you got Tokyo Tony fighting your battles and saying fuck Megan because you paid her light bill one time on TikTok. It, your rap sounded like Tokyo Tony wrote it. That's that. That's the real gag. That's the real T. Sounded like Tokyo Tony wrote your. So, let me get this straight. You trying to pull the black card when it comes to Gail King and saying she lied on Gail King, a black woman with a real, with a real publication. She lied to the nation about fucking Tory on vacation. She all, all, all of that made Gail look. People lie to journalists all the time. And that's why it's up to journalists to ask strategic questions and to let the answers and the body language speak for themselves. Lying to a journalist it takes nothing away from the journalist. It takes nothing away from the journalist, especially when it's when you've got video and audio. Now, it's different if you're typing something up in a magazine and you're saying such and such said, but even then, but when you've got the video and the audio and people can read the body language, that doesn't take away. There were plenty of times where Whitney Houston was interviewed by Barbara Walters and denied using drugs. Did they make Barbara Walters look any worse? No, it made the interview juicy and comical because we knew Whitney smoked her kneecaps off. However, the way she engaged with Barbara Walters was funny as hell, the way she dodged those questions.
Hello? Ain't shit Meg said or didn't say that took away from Gail. This is a black woman. She heard a black woman. No, she heard, she heard a black She didn't hurt a black woman. She went up there and she was uncomfortable being asked a question about her sex life on daytime television. And she gave an answer that wasn't correct. And it happens. Gail don't sit up there and talk about her sex life in the midst of daytime television. So... Playing this this race car, she 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 did this and she did that and she made Gail King look bad. A black woman with a publication. Shut, shut up! Stop! Stop! Prime example. Prime example. I'm about to show you. Hold on, I got the clip in here. I have the clip in here. Let me just sort through and find it. Give me a second, baby. Give me a second. <laughs> Lying to journalists is actually, not only is it normal, it actually increases the ratings of the journalists, especially when everybody can tell it's a lie. Where is it? I know it's here. I know I didn't take it out. I got it. I got it. Baltimore, I can't see you. Where you at? Don't tell me with this. I can't help you. I'm not help Robert. You're killing me, man! This ain't not about music! I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it! I just don't want to believe the truth! You don't want to believe it! At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. Okay, so that's that. So I found it, right? So I'm about to play this clip. And it's it's kind of like a lie, but a question, but we'll get into it. Take a look at this and this journalist who asked this, this iconic question. The question really shouldn't be iconic, but it became iconic based on the answer that was kind of like, are you serious right now? Right? It did not hurt this journalist. Let's take a look. Do you like teenage girls? When you say teenage, how are we talking? Girls who are teenagers. Roll us on your wrist of plain giant. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. But just use your common sense. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. This is not about music. <laughs> Ever, 
if anything, when people lie to you about shit that you already know is the truth, when you are an OG interviewer or journalist, it puts you on. It puts you on. Do you think that that hurt, Tory? Or do you think that that hurt Gail King when he said, when you say teenage, how... How are we talking? Do you think when he sat there yelling at Gail King that that hurt her? No, if anything, it put her on. That didn't hurt her. It was like, damn, the audacity for him to fucking lie to that woman. So, like... Nikki is not even up to par with the way that journalism works. But I did hear her use the term allegedly when she said that Megan slept with um, Tori and then slept with the baby within 24 to 48 hours afterwards. And then she used the word allegedly. But everything else she said, she didn't use the word allegedly. It's giving very much blogger gossip, and I don't want to get sued. Why well, say allegedly for that? Because when you said lion lipo, you didn't say allegedly. Everything else you said, you didn't say allegedly. Make it make sense. I'm so tired of this woman and her fan base fear mongering to everyone. Shout out to my moderators, because I see there are several barbs in here trying to... Oh, Jane, they got to you too. I'm unsubscribed. Who got to me? What you mean? My critical thinking got to me? Because, oh, let me guess. Because y'all like to say, the Rock Nation show grumble. Oh, what, what you think? Rock Nation reached out to me to give me this opinion? <laughs> y'all think Rock Nation reached out and, and put these thoughts in my head? No, this is just my common sense and critical thinking. And y'all are Delulu. And y'all refuse to come out of Delulu land. Until y'all queen, y'all majesty is on crutches and acting crazy. Y'all really not gonna see, y'all aren't gonna see the light. But some of y'all barbs did, I saw. I, I saw. <laughs> It's quite pathetic from a lot of you. Um, I'm tired. <clears throat> I'm tired coming from a lot of y'all. What are y'all's thoughts? Should I open the phone lines? I might open the phone lines for y'all. I don't know. It's late. I ain't got nothing to do. Um, there is something that I do want to put up here. I'm going to put this... Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to drop the link for y'all to call. You don't have to agree. You can disagree. But let me do this. Um, I'm going to drop the link for y'all to call in. Y'all can call in if you would like to. There is... Um, I am ashamed at some of you, Barb's. I am. I'm ashamed of some of y'all. I really am. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I've dropped the link. Some of y'all can call in if you'd like to. I'm going to play a 60 second commercial. I have one other point to make, which really, honestly, I feel like really sums up everything. The One of the pieces of imagery that Nicki Minaj used for Bigfoot, not the, the cover art for the Bigfoot single, but it was another piece of imagery that she used that really she didn't think all the way through. Somebody pointed it out, and I think it's a really good um, a really good point that they made. So I'm going to play the 60 second commercial. I'm going to go over this. If nobody calls in, nobody calls in, then that's okay. Um, but I've dropped the link. If you want to call in, you can. Let's get into our sicky, uh, sicky 60 second commercial, and we'll be right back. Get into this black. 
make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, you tapped to watch this video, make sure you tap to hit the thumbs up button to drop some pancakes down below. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. Get into this black owned business stickies. It's got things for inside your home, outside your home, and even on the go. JasmineMadeIt.com is your new destination for black girl magic mugs, tumblers, and even wine glasses. You can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses. There's a lot going on for a low price over at JasmineMadeIt.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. Let JasmineMadeIt.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching the hint or paying the rent? Y'all asses all get to stepping. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get to stepping with this nostalgic Martin themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on jasminemada.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. They've got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com, and I'll see you over there. All right, and don't forget, you can use my code Jane for 10% off, literally J-A-N-E. There is no minimum purchase requirement. And you can get 10% off, Okay. Here's one thing that I found to be really interesting, to be quite honest. So when we take a look at this Bigfoot, um, this Bigfoot imagery, um, obviously it's an oversized foot that she has here in a pink city, which seems to be her Barbie world or gag city, as she likes to call it. And not only is it promoting, I, calling Megan a beast because she's tall, but, and, uh, but I think that this is a really good point that this person made. You didn't think this artwork through. You're literally depicting depicting Megan as something wreaking havoc in your territory, literally showcasing her as something causing huge problems in your domain right now. This is showing how shaken you truly are. I think that this is a really good point because this is her Barbie world, Gag City, there's crime tape, and clearly Megan has shaken things up. It's kind of like if everyone's a regular civilian around here and, you know, Megan came through and, stomp and, and, and shook it up, it's a threat it's bothering the civilians in Gag City or her Barbie world or whatever the case is. And I think that that's why she scrapped this right away. Um, and instead she used herself in this pink Payless boot uh, inside of what was supposed to be uh, a larger footprint. So... This is something, and, and I do think that that person had a point. I think that Nikki was very much rushing, very much rushing with this because there's no reason why if, if you're the queen of your queendom and your city or your town or whatever the case is, um, it shouldn't take all this to get this quote unquote Bigfoot um, under control. We do have a caller here. Let's go ahead and show some love and respect. Please drop some pancakes in the chat 
for our caller and we're gonna get into what it is that they have to say. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. Hi, how are you today? Hi, I'm great, thank you. What are your thoughts about today's show and what's going on? Um, to be honest, I think this whole Nikki and Meg situation, I think is very interesting how, I don't know, because I feel like I have a very um, different perspective to majority of people. And I feel like that kind of reflects what I've seen on social media in the past few days. And honestly, like, from my perspective, this is just my perspective, right? So I obviously, okay, so how, how can I say this? So from my perspective, I think majority of what we've seen on social media is pretty much the same old, oh, Nikki's spiraling, she's 40, um, she's doing too much, she should have just responded in the music, rare, 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 this, this, that, yeah. And also, to be fair, what I've seen is majority of the comments of um, literally like majority of the perspectives that I've seen have been vigorously backing Megan, right? Okay, cool. So there is, and I'm not going to call it a conspiracy, but there is information out there that there are paid agents and paid bots, right? But that's neither here nor there. What I wanted to say was my personal perspective is I think with Nikki going off on Twitter and everything like that, me personally, I kind of see it from the perspective that she's coming from, which is that I think the disc dropped. And to be fair, it didn't really make noise for the first two hours. And then that's when Nikki went live and then she previewed the Bigfoot song, et cetera, et cetera. And then that's when the whole everything started going from there, right? And I feel like when she did this, I think the reason why she did this was because her intention has been to expose what's really been going on behind the scenes so that's essentially um allegedly rock nation um not just them to be honest this has been happening for a while ever since cardi b with atlantic the machine that's been set up to go against her pretty much right so i think her intention was basically to expose all of that which is why she kind of um was tweeting a lot and I don't know if any of you guys have seen some of the receipts on her Twitter page, because me personally, I've seen receipts, like I've seen receipts. So that's why I'm kind of like, OK, how do you explain this? Because on Megan's side, I don't like I don't I haven't actually seen any proof. Like I'm just keeping it a buck. But um, nevertheless, I think her intention was to expose um some people feel like that wasn't the best thing to do she just dropped it in the music and basically shocked everyone and then maybe went on the the whole twitter uh, marathon from there which is fair enough I, I to be honest i don't really have an opinion on that i kind of feel like it could have gone that way and i do think that would have gone a definitely a different like i think the public would have received it differently right um versus how she did do things because then when the disc dropped it was kind of like okay but we've heard we've heard you say like majority of these things already like on twitter that obviously there were a few new things like that she put in the song but it's still like you know um and yeah and also in in regards to the actual disc itself um to be fair like it's a warning shot it's not like that wasn't a, a, a serious song like as someone who is familiar with like Nikki's personality, like it was a warning shot. Like that wasn't a serious song. Like that was that was like, oh, I'm playing, I'm playing on your head top kind of kind of flex. So yeah. Okay. So um what what sort of receipts is it that you've seen? that prove that there were bots? Because honestly, both sides are, are saying, Megan said that there are bots coming from Nikki's side, and Nikki is saying that there are bots coming from, 
from Megan's side. Mm -hmm. So what what receipts is it that you're saying? Okay. I actually didn't know that about Megan. Did Megan herself come out and say that? Or was it the fans? No, Megan said it herself. I listened to okay. Megan the entire time I got ready for this video. I listened to both Cobra and I listened to his repeatedly when I got ready. Megan said that. Okay, that's interesting. So, because what I saw was it, I think it was the, was it yesterday? Um, no, not yesterday, two days ago, I saw um, Nikki had retweeted something on her TL. And even before I saw it retweeted, um, there were a couple there were a couple of pages saying that they had been dm'd by an account i can send it to you on twitter actually um some people have been dm'd by an account that basically said oh we've seen that you've been um engaging with the nikki and meg topic um what did they say they said something about basically oh would you like to um basically like tweet on behalf of um trying to make um something about trying to make the situation look a particular type of way, like to portray in a in a certain type of light, right? And then they basically said, oh, we'll pay you a certain amount. So the range was like $250 to $500. And then um, people had screenshotted it and posted it. And then there was, I think it was an I Spice fan account that received the, um, the same DM from the same account. And they basically um, accepted the offer and they posted um, a tweet, which was, so basically the tweet is basically to um, praise Megan and to basically like push down Nikki. So that account tweeted that, and then they literally posted their screenshot after that um, of them being paid $500. And- Well, that's, that's, a, that's a singular account that any raves, craves, you know, fan can do, what is that doing for the the bigger picture of, oh, someone's getting number one, someone's not getting number one? Because honestly, a Meg fan that isn't even in communication with Meg and a Nikki fan that's not even in communication with Nikki, any of them can really go too far and be such a fanatic that they do some bot stuff. What does that have to do with the bigger picture of these two ladies really arguing on a large scale? Like anybody can, I, I can go, I can go out and I can buy a bot for B2K right now. I'm, I mean, I'm taking it back to who I was a real fan of when I was in middle and high school. I could go buy a bot for B2K, IMX, Bow Wow. Uh, I, I could go and buy a, and then take a screenshot of that, and people would say. Oh, they don't really have no sales because look at this, you know. So what is a singular screenshot of somebody doing too much and spending $23, dollars $8,500 buying a bot? What, what does that have to do with the, the bigger picture of what's happening? Because if, if, if there's one fan who's buying bots from one side and it only costs them $85 or $130 bucks, What's to say the other side is not doing that too? And who's ordering that? No, but that's the thing though. That's the thing. It's not just one singular account. Like, so even when I- thing. What, do, do you have receipts of buy, buy, buy? Like, what, do, you, do you have receipts of all of that? I do. I've seen it for myself. And, and this is not the first time also. Like there's literally been fake Bob accounts. Like, for time for like this has been going on for a long time like if you're talking about the bigger picture then we can really talk about the whole like the industry as a whole and the whole agenda to pretty much replace nikki get her out of here because nikki's basically fucking up the other um like the other companies money because they see how much um they see how much money that nikki is worth right how much money she makes so they want that for themselves and that's essentially the whole reason behind the whole cardi b versus nikki minaj thing that happened in the first place but they see that that didn't work so now they're basically using another girl another rap girl as a pawn 
So, so if you're talking about the grand scheme of things, then that's the angle that I'll be coming from. So where do you feel like most of the bots are coming from? Well, this is just based off of what I've seen, but it would obviously be coming from allegedly, because I don't know this for sure, but from what I know, it makes sense from Rock Nation, from, well, from the people that's managing Megan, which is basically Rock Nation. Because honestly, like I feel like from what I saw on Twitter, like not even just Twitter on Tik, like it was everywhere, right? So it's like, it honestly, it was very like overwhelming the amount of um, the same thing that I was seeing being said. It was the same, like it was actually the same angles being repeated. I didn't really see any open um conversation like that kind of like led to like understanding if that makes sense mm -hmm. and i feel like i don't know in a sea of comments that would basically be back in meg there would be one person that's actually saying something that alludes to actually finding the truth i mean okay you from me I'm here for open dialogue. Like I'm genuinely here, like for open dialogue. I'm giving my perspective. I I, I understand. But I'm so open to hearing like, your, like to your So side. okay, so the so you feel like you're privy to information about bots that are against Nikki. So what makes you believe that there aren't bots coming from Nikki's side against Megan that you aren't privy to? How how do you know because, how do you know that there aren't bots coming from Nikki's side, and you're just because if you're saying you're privy privy to bots coming from Megan's side, how do you know there aren't bots, and you're just not you're so clearly you're in an in, in some sort of inner circle. How do you know there's not an inner circle coming from Nikki's side, and you're just not privy to that? How do you know? um so first of all because like that's i haven't seen anything in regards to that like i'm like so you're saying okay so what you said about the whole inner circle thing like i'm just the, like i'm the type of person where like i actually um i don't do surface level like i look for the nitty-gritty i literally i look for the truth so it's like i haven't seen that from nikki's side so is it is it is it that if there's anything that you haven't seen in the world, does it mean that that doesn't exist? No, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. But okay, I know that they like like it's like I'm not saying that certain barbs may not um, purchase bots to do whatever. That's very possible. Like really and truly, that's very possible. But in terms of like um what i've seen in regards to like this whole thing like i know what i'm talking about like i'm not crazy like everyone's trying to make out like i'm no i'm not like saying I'm that like I'm crazy, slow. but it doesn't just mean that one side is engaged in if if you're claiming that one side is engaged in essentially kind of like dirty playing dirty essentially if, if bots is playing dirty right so if, if you're saying that one side is playing dirty, but you you don't have evidence or you haven't seen or witnessed the other side playing dirty, it doesn't mean that the other side isn't playing dirty. It just means you haven't seen it. So how do you know that the other side isn't playing dirty? Because it's like out of nowhere, all this like overwhelming support for Megan, like when she hasn't been making noise in how long? Like, let's be real. When was the last time we heard Megan make noise? Like, was it what with Cardi B? And even before that, what it was with her album? Like, Megan hasn't really been making noise, but all of a sudden it's like everyone's, oh, I'm Team Meg, I'm Team Meg, I'm Team Meg. And it's just like. Megan hasn't made noise because that was her personal choice to. And again, th th this this is one of the main points when she was in this, when Nicki Minaj was in the space with Joe Button, she said she wants to drag this out and play victim. Meg completely got quiet. She wasn't even talking about being shot anymore. She wasn't talking about her foot injury no more. So no, you haven't heard from Meg. 
she got completely quiet. And when it was time for her to, to speak up and, and roll out something, she did. But it wasn't about her being shot in the foot. So No, she was still throwing shots. What shots did Meg fire about her foot? Not about her foot, but about the Tory situation. Like she was throwing shade. I can't tell you what, like exactly, because I don't, like I don't. Listen well, to if you can't tell so. what, then I mean, like, what are you really? I mean, saying? I could go back and find it for you, but it's like I'm saying that like, off the top of my head because I don't listen to. Yeah, like that. you're saying it off the top of your head, but you also don't have anything to substantiate. No, because I've seen it, I've heard it before, so I know yeah, what I'm talking about. If I was to go back, the receipt but, would still exist. Yeah, but you don't have anything existed, to substantiate, then. and at the same time. Nobody can tell anybody how to handle or deal with or live through and exist through trauma that is resides with them when they and are accused. It's it's the same way that I agree with that though. Minaj brought up Rihanna and said and basically said that Meg should have handled her abuse the same way that Rihanna did. And that was trash. Rihanna shouldn't have been brought up in this situation. Rihanna's trauma should have never been brought up in this situation. The way that we, um, Rihanna handled her trauma and what was done to her by Chris Brown and how Rihanna handled that had nothing to do with how Meg handles hers. How dare you tell me that I should handle my trauma and abuse and battery? I should handle it the same way another woman handled hers. These are two different situations. These are two different instances. And you can't tell somebody when to start or stop thinking about or speaking about their domestic violence. So truthfully, a lot of people in the chat, and I ask even you, when is the last time Meg has spoken about being shot in the foot? So, like I said, I didn't keep up with her. So it was fairly exactly. recent. Though. That 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 it was probably that, like that's my point. last year. That's my point. That's so she's not though. trying to milk it. Nicki Minaj tried to make it seem like she was trying to milk it, but um No, but that's the thing. Like that's why Nikki said, Oh, her career is built around sympathy. Because it is, it's basically sympathy and payola. It's the same thing with Cardi B. So it's like because really and truthfully, like, okay, what what did she do? She went on hiatus. She disappeared for a bit and then she came back and she said, I'm in my healing girl era. And then she said she had an album coming out. What's wrong with being but in then your, it's like what's wrong with being in your healing girl area after you have been hurt? And I never said there was anything wrong with it, but I'm saying that I'm just relaying like the events that happened. And I'm saying that that's that's basically that's basically what she said, right? Because I feel like what Nikki said was not was not. Oh, she, it's not like she was trying to police Megan into saying, "Oh, you should handle it the way that Rihanna did. You don't need to make this your your whole career." That is blah, literally blah, 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 what she that. said. You know what? Let me go, let me go back. I'm gonna I'm play it while you right here on here with me. She said she was looking for a Rihanna moment, and she was looking for sympathy. And Rihanna was anxious to just get past this point in her life as if Megan wasn't. That's what she said. That's what she said. Let me see. What's the time stamp? Uh, uh, 16.07. Shout out to this channel. I'm saying that she wasn't telling her how to heal. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that. Like I heard the clip. Like I, I, I heard the clip. But my whole point is because I just wanted to come up and give my perspective because I feel like a lot of people have holes in their knowledge. Like really and truthfully, this whole thing is not. It's not about Megan. It's actually about the machine. That's behind her. If you've been like, if you've literally like looked at the receipts, like, it's so many things that I could get into. Everyone will call me delusional because there's things pertaining to our husband, 
things I would say everybody's calling you delusional. Yes, my chat may be saying some things about you because there's a lot of things that you were saying that don't make any sense. But I wouldn't say everybody's calling you delusional. So what doesn't make sense? What doesn't make sense? Because it's like there's there's people that I've been able to explain this to and I've been able to show receipts and they like it but it's it's like if you're like if you're so locked in on a um on a specific perspective because it's all you've kind of like been inundated with it's like it's all you've like seen like let's say all these headlines that you've constantly seen not only just with the situation but in the past as well like it goes back to what Nikki was saying when she said when people are constantly saying sorry when people are constantly saying um oh this person's ranting this person is spiraling it makes you like no longer believe what that person is saying it's like I honestly feel like that kind of effect has really shown itself like with this situation because it's just a lot of things that are not being considered here, which it will it will just shed a lot of light on the situation because I'm by no means saying that Nikki is perfect and she's this and she's that and I'm not no obsessed fan. Like I'm literally someone who was genuinely inspired by her at a very young age. Like I was genuinely inspired by her and that led me into my purpose today which is to make music and i genuinely anyways let me not go into that but my whole thing is um oh what was i saying my whole thing is um damn i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> yeah Nicki minaj does the same thing when she's trying to explain herself with shit that doesn't make any sense no, I genuinely lost my train of thought. I'm not gonna lie, like yeah, Nicki Minaj does the same thing because she's trying to talk about shit that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, for me personally, it's because there's like there's honestly so much to cover. Oh yeah, I was saying I was basically saying the whole like thing, like basically just a lot to get into, and it's like honestly, like I won't really be able to get into it if you're being so like rigid about it if you're if you genuinely don't want to actually like because i feel like you're kind of coming into this with the whole yeah like none of it makes sense the, 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 this is that i'm not trying to hear what no it's not, it is none you of it doesn't make kind of sense thing. because some of it does it's just people who pledge their allegiance and they literally pledge their allegiance to Nicki Minaj to the point where they throw common sense out the window and they suck farts out of her ass instead of really keep Okay, what about I said that doesn't make sense? What about what doesn't make sense? No, what have I said, sorry, that doesn't make sense because I'm not throwing my common sense out the window. Like I, I, I came to give my perspective. To have an open dialogue because I genuinely like I genuinely care about both sides. Like I'm not biased. Like I'm not biased. You're actually. not a barb. Are you not a barb? Um, I mean, I'm not a like. I don't have a Twitter page that's dedicated to being a barb or anything like. Like I said, I'm a I'm a music artist, right? So Nikki inspired me, and so she's the reason why I do music. So yes, you can say I'm a barb, but I'm not. I'm not like a like a Twitter, like a social media bar, if that makes sense. Like I'm not someone who is like constantly on on social media. I really don't use social media like that, like really and truthfully. So So the thing was about bots, right? We get in the bot, because I, I literally just asked okay. you about Barb and you couldn't even give me a yes or no question. You tiptoed around that, but at the end of the day, you are Barb. But when it comes to bots, you're like, oh Me Meg's got bots, Meg's got bots. Nicki Minaj has been in the game for 10 years. You think Nicki that she manages herself though? I'm sorry, what was that? Nicki manages herself. Like she doesn't have a team that um yeah, I that mean, not, she doesn't have a team, sorry. I mean she, she doesn't have a manager. She she recently has been managing herself. And that's very obvious and that's very sad. Someone should take her phone and have her log off. She's been tweeting for seven days straight about a girl that she acts like is so not talented. And she's been tweeting for seven days about the girl. It's ridiculous. And so for you to say, oh, 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 Meg's, Meg's got bots and my, my girl Nikki don't, 
as if Nikki isn't capable of having bots. Nikki has been in the game for twice the time that Meg has been in the game. And it seems that you're not able to uh, even accept the, the fact that it's a possibility that no, I, I do that that Nikki could have bots as well. And sometimes, I fans, said that could sometimes be possible. fans take it upon themselves to buy bots, to buy views, to do and things, I said that. whatever. And I so said that earlier. to say that Meg or Rock Nation is actually buying the bots that you so speak of, that it could just be some unhinged Meg fan that are buying the bots. And by that logic, who's to say that there aren't some unhinged Nikki fans that are buying bots to do? Because one thing I heard Nikki say earlier today is they buy bots to speak out against me. And the fact of the matter is just because spe people speak out against you, it doesn't mean that they're bots. There are a lot of people speaking out about um, Nicki Minaj right now. All of them are not bots. I'm not a bot. The, Twitter, the people on TikTok that are being doxxed are not bots. We are speaking out mm -hmm. against her and we are being critical of her and her behavior and her mm -hmm. lack of morale. We are not bots. So all of the, oh, you got a bot. True. You got a bot. Everybody got a bot. So for you to act like there aren't bots on the side of Nicki Minaj, it's, it's a little ignorant to me. I'm not acting like anything. I literally agreed with you earlier. I said, yeah, it is possible for um, Barb's to have their own bots. And I did say it, it could be possible on Nikki's side, even if I'm not aware of it. Also, um, that's just the, well, like, that's just covering bots. You, when like, I asked you for the receipts for the Meg bots, you said, okay. And then when I said, okay, how about the Nikki bots? You said, well, I haven't seen it. So I said, what makes you think that there are no Nikki bots? You said, well, because I haven't seen it. And I said, just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, right? So we went from here, there, and everywhere and you've played a lot of mental gymnastics to try to stick up for your fave. But at the end of the day, Nicki Minaj is not perfect. I'm not playing no mental mistakes. gymnastics, child. Nicki Minaj is not above reproach. She's not above reproach. I never said that. Like, I, I, mental gym, I'm literally here. I, I do not have the energy to play mental gymnastics. I'm not going to lie. So, but what I, what I did want to say is bots is one thing, paid agents is another. Literally, the guy that you posted, um, Baylor Town, right? Um, he came out. So, obviously, um, he actually got docs, which I don't condone, by the way. I don't condone that. He got docs, right? And then he basically put a video up after that. Um, and he basically said that he only did it, because he was apologizing, whatever. He said that he only did it for, uh, what was it, to go viral because it was a trending topic. So that in itself said a lot because on that, like that day, like on TikTok, apparently like, cause I don't really use TikTok like that. Um, everyone's for you page was pretty much like filled with like the same perspective, the same things, like the same, like literally the same topics, same stories kind of thing. And then people were coming out later saying they either did it to go viral cause it was okay. trending or you, because they got paid. You talking about the white boy who was talking real fast about the queen of rape? Yeah, that, that's what I meant by the video that you posted. Other okay. people did the same yeah. as well. Now, now, I think that you're misrepresenting what was actually said by him. Because what happened was he did that initial video. He got doxxed. His family got doxxed. His family was talked upon. People sent stuff to his house and was doing all this other stuff. And then he pretended to be extremely bothered by it. And then not only that, his TikTok was taken down and it seemed like he was hacked. And then he pretended to be extremely bothered by being hacked. However, that takes nothing away from the truth that he told in the initial video about Nicki Minaj. So... You might say that he's trolling. Yeah, he might have been trolling about how bothered he was. But it doesn't change anything that he said in his initial video. Not no, at it all. Doesn't. It doesn't. I, don't, I didn't say that he was trolling for what he said in the video. That's not my angle. What he said in the video, right? Um, so with the little Twist song, that's 
that in itself, like that's not really anything that I can comment on. The video, however, of her giving the alleged 13 year old boy a lap dance, that's a lie because literally that show was an 18 plus show because they had dildos on stage. Like you couldn't go to that show if you weren't 18 or over. And when you actually watch the video footage of um, of her being booed by the, well, allegedly being booed by the fans at the show, like nowhere in the video, like, do you hear like her asking, oh, how old are you? 13, like, and then everyone starts booing. Like it literally showed what the video was basically her at the show. And then it just cut, like, it just cut to boo. And then her like speaking into the mic and then proceeding to do whatever, right? But my whole thing is like, the video didn't make sense. Videos can be edited like with audio put over them. I've seen it with a Cardi B video, I think where they said that she was going off at the Grammys or something like that. And that was fake as well, apparently. Like these things can be contrived. And even then, like when I, when I researched it, it wasn't like, there was only two pages that like had the video. But my whole thing is, it's like, this is how the media paints a narrative. We all know that the media paints narratives. We all know that the media uh, suppress the truth. And my whole thing is, if there's a concerted effort to go against um, a music artist, not only because, oh, they, they want to get her out because they, they want to, they, she's taking too much of the money. We want the money now. Because she also speaks out, like, you guys need to understand, like, when she's speaking out yeah like right now everything that's going on on twitter she's speaking for a lot of people in the industry who don't have the power to speak up and that's just the truth like that's literally like that's that's honestly the ammo behind it it's not because she has a personal vendetta against megan is, megan is a pawn who is, who is she speaking with. up for considering how like a lot of people, I, it's, a lot it's, of people. It's as if that is supposed to override what her brother has done. Do you know what her brother did, or do you just want to overlook? Yeah, that? I know about that. Oh, oh. No, so babe, you know babe, that her brother. Like, I mean, so you know that her brother got with a woman, and he became the stepdad of said woman's child, and she was eleven, and he raped her, and his semen was found in that eleven-year-old girl's panties. And Nicki Minaj yes, wrote a letter to the judge asking for leniency, asking for leniency after a grown man's semen was found in an eleven-year-old girl's panties. And she she writes a letter. So you 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 talking about what she's done for the betterment of people? Well, what about what she's done for the worst of people? For, 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 not even forget her husband, but let's just put her husband to the side for a second because she's aligned with a lot of rapists. So how 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 can you explain what her brother has done? I'm confused. I can't explain that because that's her brother. That's not. But I know about the story. Obviously. And she, like, and she this... wrote a letter asking for leniency, hoping that the judge would let him out sooner or give him a lesser sentence. She wanted him to not, not to, 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 to not be penalized for what he did mm -hmm. in the same way that she's excusing her husband right now. So she's not only dealing with feeling like, oh, Megan took a shot at me and whatever. And really that shot applies to a lot of people. It applies to a husband. It applies to a brother and a lot of other people. So like what, like what, what is it? Is she so, some kind of saint excusing this? If, if it was, if it was your niece, if it was your sister, if it was your little sister. But the thing is, but when have I said that I've excused that? That's the thing. No, it's like you're coming no. No, this no. I'm not like the question. You haven't even heard is, my, my answer. If, if it was your 11 years, because you, you're making a lot of excuses for Nicki Minaj right now. You are. And if it was your 11 year old sister and her brother's semen was found in your 11 year old sister's panties, would you be making these excuses? The thing is, you I'm can't answer up with a yes or no. Uh, come up. Uh, you get you you can give me another paragraph if you want, but can okay. you? No, yes I wouldn't no? be. Of course, I wouldn't be making these excuses. Like I think that's a very like 
come on now, like ooh, ooh. it is. That, it, that, that, like at this point, it's right. a rhetorical question because obviously the answer is no. No, I'm it's not, not a I'm rhetorical not, question. I'm not slow. How you're acting is quite the Lulu right now. But no, I'm, like really and truthfully, I, I, like I'm, I'm coming up here raw and honest, right? I literally said I'm here to give my perspective. This is my perspective. You can say that, oh, you're making a lot of excuses, but this is why I've come up with my perspective to have open dialogue. I'm genuinely interested to to hear like the other like the other perspective. Like I genuinely am. That's the type of person I am. That's why I'm up here. I'm not here to to rah rah rah. Yeah, no, you lot are wrong. This this like this is not that. Of course, I wouldn't be making no excuses. Of course not. My whole thing is, that's her brother. Her brother is separate to her. But not only that, with the whole court thing, with her um, writing up the letter to the judge, with that, obviously, I I was not in the courtroom. My perspective, what I know is that she gave the letter to the judge before the evidence was like presented in court that incriminated him because i think the case was um what happened the case when the case um originally got to court he needed like um i don't want to say a character reference but but basically but basically the letter that she wrote right i think it i think that i think it was a character reference i don't know the the details like that but that's why she gave the letter this is what Again, I know. I'm not saying you that oh she she's a saint, you, she's perfect. This is that I'm not saying that. You don't write a letter without knowing all that is going on. You don't write a letter without knowing. She gave that letter knowing exactly what her brother was accused of, and that's the bottom line. This is how you know. I'm genuinely asking by the way, like how do you how do you know that the evidence was there when she wrote the letter? Because do you believe that her brother told her the truth? Told her the yeah, evidence was right that you you're not able to submit a letter to to the judge and to the courts and to the jury if you don't have all the evidence provided for you. One of the last steps when you are writing a letter of leniency or when you 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 want the judge to be lenient everything has been laid out at that point she already knew what had been happening at that point you you don't write a letter before all the evidence came in they don't allow that i'm not, do, do you know about the law i don't live in america so Things are different over there. Again, I'm just you saying what to I saw. write a letter so of leniency that. until you know everything that they've been accused of. And then you're able to write a letter of, okay, well, this is what it is. Because your letter of, of asking for leniency is based on all that they've been accused of and all of the evidence that has been presented. Everyone knows this. So if, if you don't know the law, you don't even know what the fuck you're defending. You're defending Nikki and you don't even know what the hell you're defending her against. That's I the wasn't point. defending her. I was repeating what I what I saw. That's what I'm you're, saying. You're repeating what that, you saw, but you're not repeating because I don't you research. You ain't research shit. That's because, the point. Okay, because there's there, okay, so but you this, this is what I'm trying to say. Questions and there I know what lot, I'm talking about, and you don't know what you're talking about. Thing. No, but this this is what I'm trying to say. There is so You're much. You're not allowed to, I came to up write to speak. a letter of leniency unless you know all that has been accused and all okay, that's I believe been brought you. up in all of the I evidence. Believe you. Come this on. is not an argument. This is not an argument, though. I like I believe you. It, like, it, I hear I mean, what you're it, saying. It, it's clearly some sort of back and forth because you asking me questions like you know what you're talking about and you don't. So if you would allow me to speak. I've allowed you to speak and you've already shown your ignorance what you don't know. The, okay. I okay. So I accept what you're saying. I receive it. I came up here to give my perspective on what I knew. So I can acknowledge that I don't know everything. There's there's certain gaps, there's certain things that yeah, of course, of course I can't. I can't um, defend and say, oh, this and that and this and that. 
no one's perfect at the end of the day. And I'm not saying that Nikki's no the same. Perfect. I'm if not saying that. Kelly isn't perfect, Nikki. She's not perfect. Yeah, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred percent. Like a hundred percent. Like that's not rocket science. You know, like, like I said. Anyways, like, like I said, like I, I, I didn't come here to debunk every single thing because she's not perfect. Like you just said. There's certain things that I don't know about because I wasn't around for that time. Like I've been, well, I've been a barb for for a long time, like since I was 11, I'm 24, you know? So like there were certain times that I was around, certain times that I wasn't. So there's certain things I know, certain things that I, I don't know. So I just came up to give my perspective on what I knew. And I absolutely respect, um, like your perspective everything that you know what i'm saying everything that we've spoken about today like honestly like this is no like this is no ignorance at all and i didn't mean to come across that way at all um you know i i didn't want to come across you know you know being mean or whatever against you i don't know how long you've been tuning into my channel you might be new um, but when it comes to holding pedophiles um, accountable, I do get pretty passionate about it. And that is I'm one sure. thing about my channel. I get pretty passionate about holding pedophiles accountable and debunking the, the debauchery around people who are trying to make excuses for pedophiles. I don't take it easily. I don't take it lightly. And I go in. And that's that. Yeah, understandable. No, 100%. Oh, of, like, like, understandable. And just to clear the record, like, I am not, like, making any excuse for, like, a pedophile that has been convicted with evidence. Like, that's... Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's not, you know what I mean? Um, I don't even have to really say too much on that. That's not, yeah, it's just not it. But, um, yeah, I mean, okay, I just think, so, okay, no, what were you about to say? You said you just think what? No, it's okay, go on. No, you go ahead. No, 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 it's cool. I was just, no, Sorry, oh, just not us playing tag with you go, you go, now you go, now you go. <laughs> No, for real, you go. What, what 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 were you about to say? No, I was just gonna say like that's I don't know, like his situation is you know what I mean, it's it's his own kind of situation. That's just what I was gonna say. Okay. All right, so we've got two other callers back here. I wanna get them in. Um what I want to do is if if you still got time, I'll still have you on. I would still love to have you on and on the panel, but I want to bring them on. But I, I want if you need to drop down because you got other stuff to do, I totally get that too. But I'm gonna bring somebody else up here. Um, but we do need a 60 second break. Um just so I can wash my hands. So it was totally up to you. Um, we got two other people here right now. I'm going to play a 60 second commercial. The next person I'm going to bring up if they're still by their phone is, what is it? Ashley Intellect. We got Ashley Intellect and then Marine X, if I'm reading that correctly. So we've got a couple other people. So this seems like it's going to be... <laughs> Um, a really interesting thing. So we'll go on the 60, a 60 second um, break and then we'll come back. So I won't drop you down. If you need to drop down, that's okay, Phoebe. Um, but I'm going to bring the, the, uh, the next person up, but we're going to go on a 60 second break first. Okay. Okay. So that's what we'll do. We'll be right back and y'all be sure to keep it locked and hit thumbs up. 
drop some pancakes. It's getting hot and intense, but listen, there are conversations that need to be had. Let's go. Get into this black owned business, Dickies. It's got things for inside your home, outside your home, and even on the go. JasmineMadeIt.com is your new destination for black girl magic mugs, tumblers, and even wine glasses. You can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses. There's a lot going on for a low price over at JasmineMadeIt.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. Let JasmineMadeIt.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching the hint or paying the rent? Y'all asses all get to step in. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get to step in with this nostalgic Mart themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on jasminemada.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. It's got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com. And I'll see you over there. All right. So we are back. And we have Ashley Intellect. Ashley, are you here? Hi, I'm here. Can you all hear me? Hey, yes, we can hear you. What's going on? What are your thoughts about the subject matter? Yes. And just to be respectful. Hey, Phoebe, how are you? Um, Plain Jane, I've been a fan of yours for a long time, so it's an honor to be here with you. My thoughts are this. Um, first, my first point is I'm closer to height to Megan Thee Stallion. So the Bigfoot thing just blew me because as a taller person, how are we supposed to have smaller feet? Like, that's crazy to me. But my biggest thing is this has just gone extremely too far. Um, I am, I was a barb for a very long time. I hopped off of that train back in 2018. And my reason was I didn't like the hypocrisy of it all. When Remy came at Nikki with Sheether, you were dating Nas at the time. So you had Remy's bag stop because you decided to get her song taken off of streaming platforms. And I really didn't care for that. And then I just felt like every woman at that time in the industry that was coming out, either they had a bad experience with Nikki or she just came off as if she was bullying them. And I didn't like that. But to bring up somebody's dead mama lying on your dead mama, I am a very spiritual person. I don't play with mocking the dead or bringing up the dead. And I just think that was just extremely too far. You know, it was very far, especially because, again, like her dad has recently passed away. I truly think that Meg has too much class to turn around and talk about her dad, even though it's fair game. Like, you know, my my analogy is like, because a lot of people think feel like this is a, a kick below the belt. It's below the belt. So if we're talking about below the belt, we're talking about kicking somebody in the balls. If you kick me in the balls, why can't I kick you in the balls? Why can't I kick you? You know, so it's if if you said that about my mom, why can't I start joking about your dead dad? But I truly feel like Meg has too much class to um return that type of energy i really do however if she did i wouldn't feel bad because it's like you opened that door you know yeah. a lot of people feel like okay well this is hip-hop and there is no low there is no there is no whatever but, but it is it is though because i mean if you think about it i always think about this and my having parents that grew up in the 90s, like both of my parents are in their 50s, so we all love hip-hop in my house. They talk about rap beefs. We talk about the greats. So we always talk about Tupac versus Biggie. It wasn't too, and this is no disrespect to the dead, but it wasn't too long after Tupac released Hit Him Up, he was out of here. Because I think that karma just came back for him. When you send out darts like that, karma always comes back to bite you in the ass. And even with me, if somebody brought up a dead friend or a dead relative of mine, 
I wouldn't bring it up on them because I don't want to put that shit on myself. And again, I'm not going as far as in death. Even if you brought that up on me, I'm not doing that because that's just not. No, like who raised y'all? I agree with that sentiment. I mean, like I said, that comment that I seen that said um, um, it was under the neighborhood talk. It was like, okay, well, if Megan come back and says, well, we had to peel your dad up from the ground like a sticker because he was caught in a, in a, 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 a not a hit and run, but it, he it was a car accident and he was, okay, what can you really say then? So... I get it. Like, unfortunately, unfortunately, let's let's just keep it a buck right now. All of us. Not on your damn mama. Not on your damn mama. Like, unfortunately, it's catchy despite how disrespectful we think it is. It's sadly catchful because it's repetitious, mm -hmm. but it's just like any other nursery rhyme. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like that Sam I am. Like, <laughs> it's... It's, it's catchy because our brain just it's 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 so sad that Nikki went there. Um, I I I really just feel like Nikki don't really have in the arts. She talk about she got four other tracks. It's not giving that. If if at the end of the day, if you was really about what you said you were about, you said you got twenty four hours to respond to apologize to your mama or I'm a release X, Y, Z. And she still ain't really, she don't, she don't have it. Um, It's unfortunate. It's extremely unfortunate that Nikki had to reach this low. And I feel like Nikki is just on her way out and she can't go out gracefully. Instead, she's just going out really bitchy. Because it's very easy for Nikki to be just an evil bitch. That's like that is her um that's her marketing, that's her ploy, that's her strategy, that's her personality. So it's it's unfortunate that she's had to resort to this. Um Marine X, what are your thoughts? Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you as well. Can you hear me? Yes. So I, I, um, <clears throat> you know, I come at this as a man in his late thirties, and you know, I've been following Nikki since she was like my color. I don't know how the color has changed, but you know, I, I would say that, um, I just for me, I feel like Nikki's like at the penultimate stage. This is like the second to last chapter of her career, and I don't know if she knows how to move other than just like you know, what she's been doing for like nearly the last decade, which is it, it, it kind of looks a little disgusting. It I almost feels sad for her, not because of how she's coming out, because it was, in my opinion, like when people come at you and you decide not to respond, it says a lot about them, not a lot about you. But, you know, there's other rappers in their 40s and 50s who move different. And I just can't figure out if she just can't figure out how to get in that space. You know, people like Ross and Jeezy, and Nas, Eminem just turned 50. Uh, Missy is 50, in her 50s. And these and, and these people move different. And I don't know if you can call it punching down because Meg is doing well for herself. But a lot of them don't feel the necessity to punch down. Um, and it just it just makes me feel like that, you know, we're watching in front of our eyes like the crumbling of someone that does not know how to transition to the next stage of their career um gracefully and, and it's it's it, it's almost like i listened to the 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 i, I want to say clap back but i don't even know if meg was talking about her to begin with but i listened to it it was catchy and all but i feel like it's just like all right well you know i i feel like there was not a lot of meat on the bones and i feel like she is kind of getting drug out and, and dragging it out her barbs always going to come hard she's not going to stop them because it's almost a, a version of syntastic uh terrorism and she just doesn't care if folks are getting doxxed and pe people are getting drugged and you know as somebody in his late 30s who who followed her when she was like you know everything about her looked different it was different at different vibes it just it's weird to see her nowadays when 
you know, I'm a dad with five kids, so I don't follow her very often. But when I do look at her, I'm like, damn, she is just changing and changing. And she doesn't know how to gracefully enter her 40s as a rapper and take, you know, I, 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 Phoebe, you know, I, I kind of I don't uh, feel bad for you. I just sometimes folks can be clouded by a fandom. And, you know, if you could like sometimes you got to step back and be able to just kind of digest that people need to transition. And you can help them transition by not supporting everything that they do. I wouldn't say that I'm clouded by a fandom because, like I said, I don't really, I don't be on social media like that. Um, Wait, I definitely Phoebe, don't. Phoebe, it sound like, are you, it sound like you kind of like underwater a little bit. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. It sounds a little better now. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, no, I was just saying, I don't think, no, like I'm not clouded by fandom because I don't be keeping up with all this stuff but um uh what i will say um sorry i'm just like i i've never really like spoken in public like this before so it's kind of like a little much but um yeah i wouldn't say that i'm clouded by fandom um i don't support everything that she does like because i know that she's well, do you, I guess the question I would have is like, do you have the ability, like Ashley, she was able, she, she has, there has been a transition point where she, I'm not going to say a died in a wood bar back in the day, but she has the ability to criticize Nikki. At least Ashley sounds like she has that, the ability to come up with that rhetoric. Can you throw an arrow at her and not feel bad about it at Nikki? Yeah. Cause there's things that I, I have disagreed with. There's things that I don't particularly like, like. Like I, well, I mean, I just agreed with what Ashley said earlier about the whole uh, lied on your dead mama. Like I don't. That's not a bar that I want to repeat out of my mouth. There's power in the tongue. You know what I mean? So, um, although, like, I guess the defense against her saying that would be that she's repeating what Party said. Um, that she's just putting it out there that Megan lied on her mom, like, that would be the defense, right? But it doesn't change the fact that, again, there's power in the tongue. That's not something that me personally, that I would, like, I don't engage that part of the song, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I was to hear it kind of thing, so. Well, Phoebe, and, and again, this isn't me, you know, trying to be, like, disrespectful of coming at you. I'm just want to ask you, like, did you enjoy the her, her diss track back to Megan, honestly? Outside of the whole, you know, dead parent situation, did you enjoy the track song? Because we know Nikki, oh. I've been following Nikki since. I'm pretty sure you said you've been a barb for 13 years. So we knew when Nikki was in her mixtape days. And we know how hard mm -hmm. she can get, and we know how hard she could come. Mm -hmm. Did you, can you honestly tell me, Good foot was a big foot or whatever was a good song. The thing is, it wasn't a serious song, so it's like, okay, what? Well, it's a cute bot, but that's because of the beat. I appreciate the bars, but it's not an actual song. Like that wasn't the official this record. Like that was a warning shot. That was not the song. Like she was literally trolling with that song. So I'm thinking that, and this is what me and my friends discuss. I really feel like it would have been the opposite reaction if everybody thought Nikki had eight. If everybody loved the song, if everybody was giving her praises like they always do, would it have been, oh, yeah, that was a diss, that was a diss. So I, I, I don't know. But I will say, not to change the topic, while Marie next was talking, I was thinking about, because I'm also, I'm about to turn 30 this year. So a lot of my mindset has changed. And I really feel like Nikki is going down bad because of that karma. Because look at how treacherous she was with Kim. When Nikki came in the industry, Nikki copied everything Kim did. And never can give this woman credit and never respected her. So I think now the, 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 the beasts have come home to collect. I don't know. I see a lot of people say that, but. Nikki has given Kim, well, she, like, back then she did actually give Kim props, like, a good couple of times. 
it, it must have been in private because every time she got in the media, it, it was a whole different story. She no. even went in so far as to trash Lil Kim on Angie Martinez with the with the interview that's been resurfacing. To which Lil Kim is one of her best friends. So I I'll have to disagree with you on that. No, I've seen a couple of videos. Like it was very early on in her career. That's why. And then I think um, Kim must have came out basically saying, "Oh, like she's fighting my style," kind of thing. And then that's when the rivalry started. I've seen a couple of videos of her, like in interviews. It wasn't private. Like she was in like interviews, public interviews. She was like, "Oh yeah, shout out to Lil Kim, shout out to Foxy." Da 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 da. I saw that in a couple, like a good, like probably like three or four. I guess the question I would ask is like, I I, I still don't see like a wholehearted way to critique somebody. And, and, and as I mentioned earlier, I think you said you're still in your twenties, Phoebe, right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know when like a lot of folks kind of develop the ability to like, uh, to to objectively critique those that they like. And talking about Kim, you know, she's been beefing with Kim since since ba basically since like 2007 they have moved they move past the beast as in they don't talk about it actively but you know Nicki minaj is not out there beating the drum for for Lil kim so i'm not even really sure what you're talking about with that but i i, I can get what you're the the point being is like you know there are there are folks throughout my years that i've been big fans of but i have the a bit like andre 3000 i love him he's fantastic 3000 is great but i have the ability to know when he has had fallacies and like, yeah, you know, that wasn't a good look, whether it was with Badu or with anything else he had going on or whatever. Like, you know, I don't know when you develop that, but I just want, sometimes when you put yourself in a public form, I want you to have the ability to be like, you know what, I don't want to come in here and just be subjective and just be like, oh, cause it sounds like you're white knighting for, for Nikki. And I, and, and, and that sometimes that can leave you with, uh, like pie on your face. No, I hear that. I receive that. I think it's just the way I'm kind of like articulating. Like I said, I don't usually like come up in like public forums and speak kind of thing. So this is just like something that I'm just doing to get myself out of my comfort zone. Just kind of, I guess, put the truth out there. That's something that I'm passionate about. But um, yeah, no, I definitely like, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. I definitely receive what you're saying. I'm not saying that. Um, Nikki was completely like, yeah, like Lil Kim kind of thing. Because obviously they did have their rivalry. And once their rivalry did begin, it was that, like it was up from there kind of thing. But I hear what you're saying. Is there is there anything that you're willing to hold Nikki accountable for? I mean, I've, out of the things that's been mentioned, I mean, I kind of have. I mean, what exactly, like, would you, what are you hinting at in terms of what I could hold her accountable for? What I heard her say, like, maybe what I'm interpreting is, can you say out of your mouth, like, hey, like, like a, in a complete, format in a complete sentence a complete thought like hey this is what like nikki this wasn't cool like i stopped messing with nikki minaj because it is so like nikki minaj writing her brother that letter was wrong or can you in a complete thought can you say like hey you know this isn't it am i correct the plain is shame not to cut you off or anything but there are several things i was just wondering if there were one of many that she was willing there there's several things but even if there were one or two, is it, are are you capable? Is yeah. are you capable of holding her accountable? For yeah. So like I said, I didn't like the the line in the song. I didn't like that she put that in the song, even though like she was trying to say what she was trying to say. I do think it wasn't tasteful. With the whole um, brother situation, I mean, of course, I don't. That's not something I condone. That's not something that I was pleased to hear about. I wasn't I wasn't pleased to hear about when I did learn of that news. 
it wasn't nice. There's, there's, um, what about um when Nicki Minaj paid? Do you remember when uh Tracy Chapman sued Nicki Minaj for copyright infringement, and she she uh she paid Tracy four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for copyright infringement, which is I don't know if she admitted fault, but you know to pay nearly half a million dollars for copyright infringement on a song that was never released, um, you know. Is, is almost seemingly admitting fault. Would, do you have an issue with the possibility that she had a copyright infringement using parts of a song that was unreleased in her own music? Oh, when did this happen? 2018. Okay, yeah, I wasn't around that time. You say you've been so following actually, her since you, you said you've been following her for over a decade. Yeah, and I said that as I was basically going through life. I went through times where I wasn't around. So there's certain things that I was around for, and there were certain things that I wasn't. I what? even said earlier on in the chat, I said how um, when the hate train began, uh, when Cardi B was rising and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. like, Hold on, wait. I wasn't on... Before moving on to Cardi, let me let me rephrase okay. the question. So like, it. Okay. So it's a true statement that Nicki Minaj paid her $450,000 for copyright infringement, okay? So let let's just take that as true okay. do you have an issue with the fact that nikki was accused and then rightfully paid money to someone for using their music regardless if you knew about it at this moment or if you knew about it in the past is that is that an issue like if someone told me about that about three thousand right now say hey three thousand pay some money in 2001 i blow i didn't even know that that's that's shitty I will be able to admit that. Are you? How do you feel about that? Now that I'm telling you it's a fact, you can look it up when we get off the call. Yeah, I would just say that. Yeah, she fucked up. Hmm. Yeah, she fucked up. Like, shit happens. Okay. Well, I just want to see if we can, you know, move past the clouds. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, no. I think it's the way like I'm kind of like articulating. I kind of have a habit of doing that. I don't. It's not intentional. But um, what I did want to say about oh yeah, I was just basically saying about um, even in like 2018, like when um Cardi was like going up and everything, and then the hate train began. Um, and it was pretty much like. Cardi versus Nikki. Um, even with that, because I wasn't around, like I didn't see everything that was going on. I didn't see all sides. So when I did come back to social media, like I was a bit like I basically fed into the narrative. Like I basically was like, was like, oh wow, like why is Nikki doing this? Like why is she like why is she um being mean to these girls? Like why is she doing like I genuinely was like, raw, like everyone is saying it, like but I, but kind of I think, thing. and I'm sorry to cut you off, but I think that's the issue that I have with with some of the stuff that you said on the call because I I feel like if it was a narrative and you just said, well, why are all these people? Everybody can't be lying, and that's like that's when I developed that cognitive dissonance. Like, all right, like I've loved this woman down for the last however many years, but everybody can't be telling the same lie about you. So I don't think it more so was a narrative. You believed what you saw because the receipts were there. I wouldn't. And to, and to is, be I fair, would... to be fair to you, Phoebe, I will say this, you know, 28. So 2018, I, the reason I brought up Trace, Tracy Chapman, because that was 2018 and you're bringing up Cardi and um, Cardi and, and Nikki, which was 2018 because of the, the the motorsport song from 2017 and you know cardi threw a shoe at, shoe at her and facial bruising and all that other type of stuff and they caught a truce in 2018 so for you to for you to know about this thing that harmed Nicki minaj in 2018 physically right a shoe to the face but you also didn't know in 2018 that you know she infringed on someone's copyright you know, just sometimes I, I, I just let it be OK that in the same calendar year that, you know, what I'm saying that someone just you're a fan of can have different 
beefs and they are not all uh, on her, if that makes sense. What do you mean by they're not all on her? Sorry. The Tracy Chapman was innocent. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. I, I wouldn't think that, oh, that, that was part of an agenda. In the, in the, in the, in Minaj and Cardi B. Based on what you told me. Right. Minaj and Cardi B, that all had to do with some, some, some word changes on the song Motorsport. And it just like mm -hmm. spiraled out of control. So, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of things that happen with Minaj are because of Minaj. Regardless with if she's the, the person. But the thing is, with the motorsport song, it was one of the bars was basically, um, what was it? If basically when she says, "If um, Quavo the BQ, then I'm what Nick Lombardi." Basically, she was meant to put um, Cardi, but then it's like she must have basically what it would have implied was that like Nikki was about Cardi, so Cardi didn't like that. So that's why Cardi was like, oh, like, change it, change it kind of thing. So that was, like, it was kind of, like, petty. Like, that's what caused that situation. And it wasn't really, that was just a pride issue, like, to be honest. Okay. I appreciate you having me up, Jane. I just wanted to bring to bring some insight to the, you know, when I when I heard her talk earlier, you know, saying it just me being in my late thirties and like following the situation, I was like, yeah, you know, well, sometimes like Barb's these like these folks are just so clouded by, I don't know if it's her prestige or what they think she can or cannot do, or what she's done in the past, that you know that she has fallacies, and just to point those out. I appreciate your presence. Um, I, I don't understand the last sentence that was made um, coming from you, Phoebe. Uh, I really don't get that, but um, can you explain that? About the motorsport situation. Yeah. Um, so I was basically just saying that in the bar, the bar would have implied that um, in terms of like American football, I believe, that Nikki was basically sort of like a like the captain and Cardi was like the second to command kind of thing. And that was the issue that ensued with the motorsport song. Okay. Um, a lot of us are lost to that. Yeah, because the reason I, I not to cut you off, Jen, I'm sorry, but the, the reason the few in, in Phoebe, I, I want you to know like the history of the folks that you love. The beef was not over the song. The beef was allegedly, mm -hmm. according to interviews that Cardi did, was Nicki Minaj allegedly liked and then unliked a tweet. Yes. Talking yes. talking about um, Cardi's parenting skills. And yeah, so, I'm aware of that. I'm so, aware of that. Like the, the, the song was from 2017. The beef started in 2018 and that it, it kind of and the reason that Cardi allowed herself, I, I wouldn't even say get out of character because Cardi, since love and hip hop can, has been known to throw down, but allow herself to get to the point of being physical be, because of that situation. And so, you know, the song was just. I, I don't think that had any that didn't have a lot, anything to do with the like what what climaxed it in that club. Yeah, no, I agree. Sorry, my bad. I was just adding on to what you said about um, motorsport. With the um, Met Gala situation of the shoe being thrown, yeah, that is, obviously, that is actually what happened. But even with that, like, th this goes back to what I was saying with the whole industry agenda, industry games, because the 
the tweet didn't exist. That tweet didn't exist. To this day, there's not like there's not one receipt. So it just kind of like the tweet. What I do you mean? To, what do you mean the tweet didn't exist? Minaj didn't. Um, Minaj didn't make the tweet. It was alleged that she liked the tweet. And Cardi so said that she. Was, Cardi show. said that she was going to make millions of dollars on the Bruno Mars tour, but she decided to stay home to be a mom, to be with her daughter. But then where's the receipt? Because people check Nikki's likes all the time. Mm. Somebody, somebody could have got a screenshot or a screen recording of that. All right. Well, I appreciate you, Jane. Go ahead, finish this stick. And uh, sometimes, sometimes you know, folks are just so clouded. But I, you know, I, bless your heart. So, is it about people liking Nicki Minaj and the her tweet? No, it's about the lies. It's about a smear campaign. It's just like. It's so easy to like twist things in the media. Like this is stuff that we all know. Like everybody knows this. Like the media wants to suppress the truth. It's and just in general, it's easy to suppress things. I mean, sorry, not suppress things, to twist things and make things look a particular type of way. I just think like they're not being like to this day, like there was never a receipt about the tweet. And it just I'm just relating that back to my point about so okay so if we're talking general. about receipts you you say that you have receipts about there being bots on the 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 end of um people who are anti nikki right so if you're talking about the absence of receipts where are your receipts where are your receipts for for the bots, Megan, where, where where are they? For the bots, or just in general? In general, you talking about like oh, there's a lack. I of mean, I, where where are the no, I, you have to prove that there are receipts? Where are they? I can send them to you. Like I could actually send them to you is what I'm trying to say. It's like everything sure. when, that where I, and are they sure when where send them to me. But when and where are they? And do they speak volumes or do they speak for one one person or one thing or one event? Because there can be one unhinged Meg fan. Like let's not get it fucked up. There could be one Meg fan that is being extremely unhinged. And, and buying bots, no different than there could be a, a Nikki fan who are buying bots and being unhinged and whatever. So where, where are your receipts that they, they cancel one another out? Do we, is that really what we have right here? I'm not saying that they cancel one another out pertaining to what you're saying. I'm just saying what I know I've seen. And because of what I've seen, that's the only reason why I could come up here with conviction and say... You can come up here with that. conviction. Your conviction is just you wanting to talk. Your conviction is not fact, 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 fact. It's not. It's what you think is going on. But didn't you but, say but, earlier, Phoebe, that you said that you really don't follow Meg like that? So I feel like it's kind of skewed. You know what I'm saying? If you only allow yourself to be in date with just one thing, then of course you're going to be biased one versus the other. Right? Sorry, you cut out after you said follow. I said what earlier in the this was really early in the phone call. I think it was like the first five minutes you were on. You were saying, you know, that you really didn't follow Meg like really into one person. So you only really followed Nikki. So I feel like your 
how you view it is kind of skewed because you're not really looking at both parties. It's just like you see Nikki, you follow Nikki, so you feel like there's a hate campaign on her, bots are coming against her. Why would it just be one artist getting bodied or, or getting the hate campaign, so to speak? I, I, I don't... I've seen both sides because of how just how overwhelming the whole thing is on Twitter in general. Like I've seen Twitter, TikTok, like I've seen both sides. And why I, I would think that all of this is against one person, like I said earlier, is money. People want to replace, the companies want their own Nicki Minaj basically to make money. Hence, why they're pushing all these other girls the way they are kind of thing and the only way that they could really achieve what they're trying to do is to is to take nikki off but why of is her it, spot basically why does this argument just go with black female rappers there is not any other industry whether it's pop whether it's country whether it's black male rap even if you look at caribbean music there has never been one industry where you have just one for 10 years, Nikki was the only female rapper. Well, only mainstream female rapper, because I've always been an Azealia Banks girly. Despite the shit that she says, and she is dead ass wrong for, and she has a lot of flaws, she can flow, in my opinion. But I digress. But if there weren't so many other girlies, then we wouldn't have options. So I'm just like, why is it this always on? Well, everybody was brought up to take Nikki down. Maybe it was her time to get taken down. Maybe at that crack of the scene where Nikki. And everybody was complaining, like, oh, well, Megan, she wasn't saying anything. Everybody's Megan now. Nikki literally took years off after Queen was a flop. Queen was a whole chop as far as in sales, as far as in reception. So, yeah, there were other girls that were able to come in. Why? Mm -hmm. I, I just don't understand why that's the argument. There was a hate campaign because, oh, everybody's trying to take Nikki down and get some of the money. It was an opportunity because it was missing the market. I just hate the fact that with black women, it always only have to be one. That's crazy to me. That's, it doesn't. That's, that's the thing. But that's but, the thing, though. Like, because sorry, go on. I don't want to cut you off. No, no, no. I'm sorry. You go ahead, Phoebe. I had talked a lot. Go ahead. That's my fault. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No, because like, if we really keep it a buck, though, like Nikki is the most successful. Like black, okay, so this is the thing, yeah. It's not even about oh, black women um pitting each other against each other, it's literally that she's the most successful in the genre of hip hop as a woman, she just so happens to be black. So, like, if she, like, if she, because she's the most like she's in her own lane, right? And she literally is pretty much like at the top in terms of her success, her legacy like there's nobody else that has been in the game as long and even if they haven't been in the game that long like there's no one else that's building the same kind of legacy like in terms of like just business wise branching out like if we're really talking if we're talking fashion uh perfumes makeup rare, 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 all of this all of that yeah like and what you were, sorry, to go back to what you said about Queen, like, even with that album, it didn't do well because allegedly it was, like, the rollout was sabotaged. And I remember seeing that myself as well, like, it was sabotaged. But I just kind of feel like it makes sense to take out the kingpin, right, to replace them, to put someone there and the thing is it's like it doesn't have to be one person they could definitely use several girls but they have to they have to focus all their efforts on the kingpin on the person who has like stood the longest in that position do you understand so it, it's not it's not it's not a thing where it's like it has to be one because to be honest, I don't think that that's what these companies were going for anyway. I think they just wanted to get her out of the way and um, literally have their cash cows and do whatever, whatever it is that they wanted to do. Okay. Well, it's been real. I'm going to hop on off. Um, um, I will. The plane is Jane. I watch you all the time, so I will catch you on the next live season. Phoebe, it was great talking to you.
नीचे ओके सो ये थिंग्स ये डैम शिट इंटरेस्टिंग um baby let me tell you something we live in a day and age we live in a day and age I look forward to talking to all of you all tomorrow. Mm. No, I'm I'm low. Mm-mm-mm. All righty. So I can't wait to not only get my gaming chair, but to cut my hair. <laughs> I'll be cutting my hair soon. Um, things are strange, and I'm gonna have to rethink this in the morning <laughs> when I wake up. What time is it? like midnight or 12.53 for people on the uh, East Coast. But um, yeah, this was real interesting. And I really, y'all, like what is going on? What is going on? Y'all are really out of pocket. Education, special education. Y'all are extremely out of line. I'm I'm so sick and tired of y'all. Education, special education, psychiatric medication, juvenile incarceration, emotional frustration, and premature extermination. And premix, okay, get him. Hold on, I got um, <laughs> and premix store is termination. Why can't I see my um here we go? Okay. Michael Williams show out feet to you for being a member for five months. This may be Baby, 
This may be the of the career of the rappers of their 40s. Nas, that's what I'm saying. It's too much going on that they're acting like it's bad. Put a pancake in the chat if you think Put a pancake in the chat if you think <laughs> that the call up. Yeah, that call up was. Nikki is whistling past the graveyard. It's time for her to develop artists and join. Me and the mom perform at casinos. And just to be, well, yeah, it is what it is, yeah. <laughs> Ciao, I gotta go because I can barely read these damn things anymore. Oh, snap, I got more. Shout out to all of y'all who are sitting cash apps and whatnot. I do appreciate y'all. I can't. Nikki is whistling past the graveyard. It's time for her to develop artists. Enjoy being a mom. Perform at casino. No. And just be in the skin sheets. And yeah. Well, it is what it is. Shout out to all of y'all. I do appreciate you all um, just being present in general. Woo, I am tired. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm ready to go to bed right now. I'm not even going to hold you. I am tired. I'm sleepy. Um, I But I do think that that... Um, that person that said, like, oh, I don't think you you look this. Let me see. I don't think that you thought this through. It's really given that she's wreaking havoc in your town. What does this say? You didn't think this artwork through. You're literally depicting Megan as something who is wreaking havoc in your territory, literally showcasing her as something causing huge problems in your domain right now. This is showing how shaken you truly are. I agree. I agree. Um, this is supposed to be Gag City and why is Bigfoot causing such issues? Why, 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 why? Um, I'll get into the heights of everybody a little later on, but, you know, that is what it is. Um, I love you all so much. Shout out to the people that called into the show. Um, even the person who was smoking a cigar. The men, the women, the everybody, I do appreciate y'all's support. Definitely means a lot to me. Y'all have a really, I uh, hope that y'all have a really good day. I hope that y'all have a really good uh, remainder of the week. I hope that y'all have a good weekend on purpose. My birthday is coming up on the 6th, which is, I want to say Tuesday. Let me see. I never know what my birthday is because I never really planned anything. Yeah, my birthday is Tuesday. Okay, so my birthday is this coming Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, hmm, it, is what, <laughs> it is what it is. But I love you all so much. Y'all have a beautiful day. Y'all have a beautiful night. Have a good day on purpose. And I will talk to you all later. One. Okay. I have a good one. Child.
that's on your wrist plain giant. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.